Hi everyone and welcome back to creating and running an Agile project in JIRA. We uh, already went through section one where we talked about what JIRA is, how to get started with it and create a project. And now in section two, we're going to talk about managing all of those work items that you have. So let's go ahead and get started. In this section, we're going to be covering epics, stories, bugs, and tasks and what each of those things are, how you would use them in an Agile project and create them. Then we're going to talk about issue type attributes. We're going to talk about adding and removing those and making them really custom to fit the type of work that you're doing in Jira. We're going to talk about managing the items in your backlog now that you've created them and customized them. And then we're going to talk about your board. And for those of you that do Scrum, you'll feel very comfortable with the board. And we'll talk more about how to configure that. So first, we're going to talk about epics, stories, bugs, and tasks. So we're going to talk about what they are. We're going to talk about how they're different from one another and when you should use each kind of issue type. So first we'll talk about epics. Epics, as you might imagine, are large stories. Now it's important that they have a distinct start and end, right? Just like any story, we want them to be able to be completed, which means they're going to need some sort of end. I like to think of epics as something that would span multiple sprints versus a story, which would really be completed within a sprint. Epics are not groupings of work items, and we'll take a look at that because that's a common thing that people do in a Jira UX. So we'll take a look at how we use components and labels to do this instead of epics. Epics will contain stories, bugs, and tasks, and they're really a grouping of those things. Again, a large story. Stories are smaller than an epic. Stories, bugs, and tasks are all the same level hierarchically. So they're all something that could be prioritized against one another within your backlog, and we'll take a look at that. Stories are also known as user stories, and they're called that because the intent is that they will focus on users. So you want to think about new functionality for whatever this is, and you want to make sure that you're continuing to think about the people that you're building it for. And so that's why they call them stories or user stories. One of the things that people do in Scrum a lot is that they'll have a, follow, a specific format. So you can see that format here. As a user, I would like some sort of enhancement so that I can have some sort of benefit right? Now in Jira, I find that I don't use this format often. And the reason is that once you introduce this format to a web UI, unless you have a really large display, what you see is that you'll really just see the first few words of that. So as a person, I would like this enhancement. And you'll basically just see that over and over and over through the backlog. So I don't really prescribe that format for this particular application. It's also not necessarily part of the official Scrum guide, so it's not necessarily something you have to do as a Scrum practice, but it's good to keep your users front of mind, and that's why people prescribe this. We'll also look at bugs. Bugs are what we would call a defect, or they're, they're a problem. In Jira, there's something that we'll prioritize against a new feature. So, you know, it would be, do we want to take the time in this sprint to fix something, or do we want to create something new? And you should be prioritizing those two things against one another. And then subtasks we'll take a look at quickly. I mean, that would really be if you have multiple people working on a story or a bug and you want to assign a more granular level of detail, you can use subtasks to do that. So we can take a look at that. All right, so let's jump over to Jira and take a look at these things. All right, so you might remember we have our projects here. We're going to take a look at this first project. So let's go ahead and click into that. We'll take a look at our project here. All right, so within our project, you can see here we have the backlog view. In this view, we have these three stories that are here, but first I wanna show you epics. You can see on the side here we have versions and we have epics. So we'll click epics and that'll allow us to expand these out, okay? You can see here we don't have any epics, so let's create one. So we'll create an epic and we'll call this epic, let's see, my test epic. All right, we can put a summary in here of what that is and We'll see here, you can choose issue type in the project. Let's go ahead and create it. All right, we need a summary. So we'll call this, this is a summary. Perfect, okay. All right, so we've got a test epic now. Let's take a look at this epic. You can see if you look at it on the left here, that you can expand and contract the epic. It's got an ID, a Jira ID. You can select the color that you would use for that. You can edit the name, the epic details, mark it as done. But more importantly, underneath this epic, you can see these are how many issues or stories, bugs, or tasks that are contained underneath this epic. You can see here how many are completed, unestimated, and how many are estimated. And this is a status bar on the bottom here. 
So what you would do is create your backlog items and then you would drag those into your Epic. And that's how you assign them to that Epic. And we'll look at that again in the future here. Just a reminder though, this Epic is something, it's a story, right? It's a big story, but it's something that can be started and finished. It's important that this is not just a grouping. That's not the intent of this Epic. An Epic is a story. So if we want to group items in Jira, that's a slightly different thing. And what we can do is we can use components to do that. So you'll see under the side, on the left side here, we have components. So if we select components, and we'll create one because we don't have one right now. Let's call this my test component. All right, and so we don't get an error again, we'll call this, we'll use the same value in the description. You can select a component lead and also a default assignee who will be basically use the same person that is assigned by the project default, which would be me because I'm the only person on this project. And you can see we can create those that way. And our component has now been added. And what we can do then is we can use this component that we've created in order to group items together. And we'll take a look at how to do that in a minute. Next, let's create a story, okay? You can see we have three here, but we'll go ahead and create a new one, all right? So we'll call this the newest story. And you can see actually when you're creating the stories, you have an option to create a story, a task, or a bug. And they're all ranked hierarchically the same within Jira. A story generally represents a piece of new functionality. A task is just something that needs to be done, and a bug is something that's broken and needs to be fixed. All right, so we can create a new story, all right, and then we'll create the newest task, and then we'll create the newest bug. And that way we have all three of those things, and we can take a look at them. All right, now when I select one of these things, you see I get a preview pane on the side, and we've looked at that before, but let's, we'll take a little bit closer look at it too. The other thing I want to show you is that when you select an item in this backlog view, we can actually hit the E key on our keyboard and it'll prompt an edit. Okay, which is nice, a shortcut. So you can hit that E. The other thing to note, if we select an item and it's unassigned, we can actually hit the A button on our keyboard and it will prompt to assign that item. You can see these shortcut tips at the bottom here. Okay, the last thing I want to show you in this particular section is how we would do a subtask. Okay, so if we've got our newest story here, over on this preview pane, you can see we've got the ability to add an attachment, the ability to link an item, link multiple items together and create dependencies, but then also we've got this create a subtask option. Again, we might use the subtask if this story is gonna need to be worked on by multiple people and we really wanna have more granularity around what each person's gonna do. So we click this create subtask and you can see down at the bottom here, there's a prompt that popped up here. And we can say, this is my subtask. And we can create that. And you can see now we have a subtask here. That allows us to do multiple different items of work that exist underneath a story. All right. So we learned about epics and stories and bugs and tasks.